This week is full of free DLC and drama. You record and you like it. Understand me, boy. Understand me, boy. Alright. This chair makes a lot of noise. Let's start this episode off with some good old-fashioned N64 prawn. I mean, look at all these things. I uh, think my favorite one is the very last one you can see inside of the 64, and it's it's a, it's a Zelda one. And I really love the old-fashioned style painting on this controller here. But I think my favorite controller is the Majora's Mask theme controller, right there. Yeah. So you guys can check them out. Which one's your favorite? And speaking of the, this kind of thing is, I have um, pretty much every system that's ever been out, but I have the originals, you know? it's. These feel more like art pieces. It's one of a kind, you know. And if you have a display case of all your case of all your systems, um, would you want an art piece, or would you want the original next to all the other originals, you know? Or would you want just a bunch of different art pieces? I think it would be cool to have a shelf of original systems, and then maybe have art piece systems somewhere else, because they're not really technically the same type of collector items. I don't know. What's your opinion on that? So Shadows of Mordor the new Lord of the Rings game or Middle Earth game and it had a free DLC come out it's called Power of Shadow and this lets you step into the skin of the Black Hand of Sauron it's got a couple runes that come with the DLC and a couple other things but the fact is, is that it's free DLC I love this because it the game's not very old and the fact that this DLC is free makes me really happy because DLC this early has always been a an issue because the game just come out and there's already DLC but the fact that this is free is pretty cool because yeah it's free why not speaking of free DLC Nintendo had a Smash Brothers conference on Thursday and they announced a lot of new things that's gonna be happening on the Wii U version it's gonna be coming out on December 20 what did I just say N N December I, I said November and September to combined I don't know why anyways it's going to be coming out on November 21st. And the free DLC that I was talking about is you can get Mewtwo if you buy both versions of the game. And not only do you get Mewtwo, but you get a level and a two to soundtrack if you get both versions of the game. And I plan on getting both versions of the game. And I'm really glad about that because Mewtwo has always been one of my favorite characters. And when they didn't have him in the last game, it was kind of upsetting, you know? It's like, dang, because he's always been the biggest badass Pokemon since the original games. And having him in the game is just like... Look, it's Mewtwo. It's Mewtwo, guys. It's Mewtwo. Anyways, now his Charizard's in there too, my two favorites. And that's pretty cool. Some other things they announced was up to eight player Smash, which I think is awesome because it's always been four people. And you, can, of course you can only do this locally, but it's up to eight people and it's on the bigger stages. You can't play in all the stages because eight people on a tiny stage would be utter chaos. Come on, you're having a party. There's always been those people that are like, I want to play and you're always, you take turns and loser last first person out like switches or first two people out switches that's what we used to do another thing they announced was custom stage creation so you can create your own stages and share those online i think that's pretty awesome ridley from metroid is going to have his own stage and if you attack him enough he'll join your side and help you kill the other people it's kind of interesting that they've added something like that into the game they announced a bunch of other unique levels and modes and stuff like that that's different than the 3DS version. And another thing is, is you do have the 3D ver 3DS version, you can actually use the 3DS as a controller to play the game. It's kind of interesting. I don't really like using the 3DS as a controller though, so I'll, I'm going to stick to my GameCube controller right there. My GameCube controller. My trusty GameCube controller for Smash. That's pretty much the only reason I still have that controller is for Smash Brothers. Anyways, speaking of Smash Brothers, there was an interesting article online saying that a Florida man was petitioning to get Smash Brothers on the Vita because he didn't want the subpar in the 3DS system. He wanted it on his manly Vita. I, I don't know. Dude, it's a Nintendo game. You can, you're not going to get Smash Brothers on your Vita. I don't care what this petition, petition does. I'm so, Florida people. I mean, I'm so glad I don't live in Florida anymore. Like, F Florida man petitions to get Smash Brothers on, on the PlayStation Vita. Why? Are you an idiot? Those of you that have watched my streams have probably seen me play Hearthstone. I don't play it that often, but I do play it. And it's going to be coming out for iPhone and Android phones early 2015. That makes me happy because 
I don't know, I just, I want to play it on the go. Like, if you're in the car or something, you want to play some Hearthstone? I think it's going to make a great phone game. I think pe more people are going to play it on the phone than on the computer. But that's just me. Switch Plays Pokemon is coming back for Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. So those of you guys that are interested in that, I know most of you probably know what Switch Plays Pokemon is, but they've started again for the new Pokemon game. So if you guys want to check that out, go ahead. And there you go. Go, go check it out. Switch Plays Pokemon. Play your A and B and left and right and watch him walk into a wall for five minutes and release Pokemon into the wild for no good reason. Bye Charizard. Enjoy your freedom. So there's a game called Death's Gambit that is in very early pre-alpha production right now and it looks pretty interesting. I love the style of it and it's described as a challenging hack and slash RPG where you explore an alien medieval planet filled with beasts, knights, and horrors. And every enemy encounter is a strategic skirmish. Every environment a gateway into Pandora's box. Every step a dance with death. So, you guys can um, check out some of these videos. It's not much in, on the game yet, but they're actually streaming their development on Twitch sometimes. There is the schedule on their website, so if you guys want to check that out, the description in below. And they also are having a Kickstarter soon. It's going to be released later. Like I said, it's very early on, but this game looks really interesting. So you guys can check up more on it, and there's one thing here. You guys can look at this GIF. It's of him climbing up, it looks like a giant's leg. So maybe some Shadows of the Colossus elements to it. But like I said, this game is very early on, so I'm going to keep my eyes on it. And uh, the reason is because the style of this game looks really interesting. I just like the way it looks. So we'll see where it goes. Hopefully it develops well. The developer's Naughty Dog... What am I doing? <laughs> developer's Naughty Dog are actually pushing for Uncharted 4 to be 1080p and 60 frames per second on the PS4. Are they going to be able to do this? Because I think every time I go on to PC Master Race, everything's always about frames and resolution and quality of the game. And this might change it up a little bit if they actually get 60 frames per second and 1080p on the PS4. I don't know if they're going to be able to do it or how well it's going to work. There's no way it's going to stand up to PC, of course. But to have 60 frames per second and 1080p on the PS4 is going to be a big thing. So hopefully this happens. I will be watching that to see if it does happen, but it's interesting that they're that they're trying to do that. It's really cool. But if they are going to be pushing for 1080p and 60 frames per second, they don't have the power as a PC has, of course. PC, PS4, there's no way it has the power of PC. But if they get it to 1080p and 60 frames per second, what are they going to be taking away from that game to make it up to 1080p? Because think about it, if it gets up to 1080p, it's going to need that extra processing power, right? So it's probably not going to have background detail or extra blades of grass. They're probably going to cut out other aspects of the game to make it up to 1080p. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. So those of you that like Dark Souls 2, there's a mod for first person out right now. And I like third person games. I like first person games. They both have their ups and pros and cons and downs and things like that. But those of you that want to play Dark Souls 2 in first person mode, make it just a little bit harder. There is a mod, I'll put, I'll put the link in the description, and you guys can check that out. I would be careful though, because apparently Polygon says that if you play this mod online or use this mod online, you could, there's a chance you could get banned. So I would look into that before doing it, yeah, but it looks like a pretty cool mod. So if you guys have played with the round with this mod, just feel free to talk about it in the comments. Let me know how it is. So something I found interesting is that the Evil Within, you know, I talked about that game, it's new and everything, but The Evil Within in Japan is actually censoring a lot of the gore and the blood and that kind of stuff because the game is a basic torture porn game and it just, it just shows the difference in censorship between different countries and stuff because over there you've got all this different type of sexual stuff and here sex and nudity and all that stuff is oh no but for some reason us as americans we love gore and violence but everywhere else that's what's banned but here it's not and it's it's just interesting to see that that game in japan is censored but things from japan here are censored and i don't know i don't i i i, I agree with other cultures where torture and like gore and violence should be 
more of a band thing than sexuality and nudity, but it, I don't understand it. it. I don't understand why our culture has such a need for violence and gore, because it's not really my thing, I don't know. Because it just kind of desensitizes you to the whole idea of, of torture and violence, and that shouldn't be something that you're desensitized to. But enough about the evil within and Japan and censorship and everything, I just thought it was interesting. And what are you guys' thoughts on that? And on to the next thing. Witcher 3 had its opening cinematic released, and it's a really cool video, so if you guys want to check that out, it's... I don't know if you guys care about spoilers, I don't think there's that much spoilers on it, because it's just the opening cinematic. It looks really cool, and I'll put the link in the description here for you guys, so if you guys want to check it out. Um, that way I don't put any spoilers in the videos for you guys, but go check it out. I think it's a really cool video for you guys to watch. And the last thing I'm going to talk about this week, guys, is paranautical activity. I'm sure most of you guys have heard about this now, by now, but the developer got really angry because his game was supposed to come off of early access and it didn't. It was advertised as early access, so he got angry and threatened Gabe Newell and Valve removed the game from Steam. But this kind of... I just wanted to talk about this for a little bit, guys. It's... It's never good to threaten somebody, you know, because... We've all probably said, oh, I'm going to kill that guy, or I'm going to I'm gonna kick his ass or something. But you, we don't really mean it when we say it. But when you're a developer or something, we it's kind of looked at differently when you say stuff like that online because you're like this figure. And the same thing happened with Phil Fish with Fez because there's a really good video I want you guys to watch. I saw this video when I was looking up information on this. And it just kind of shows how the media focuses on one aspect of a person when they're in the limelight because come on they, it's got to be stressful making these games and it's something you've been working on for a long time and you've got all this different input all the time of people hounding you in different ways and it's really stressful but it just some people shouldn't be looked at as a public figure because it's not who they're supposed to be they're, they I mean if they want to make the game and the game is probably really good but they they shouldn't be the face of the game because things like this happen but the game is still even though the game's not on steam anymore it's still available you can still buy it on their website it's ten dollars and the game looks really interesting so if you guys want to check it out there's a link to where you can buy it in the description and i want you guys to watch that video on phil fish because it just kind of shows like i was talking about how some people just are targeted and kind of anything they do wrong is shown and anything that they do good is just washed away because they have to be this image of what is wrong with this. You know what I'm, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, watch the video. You'll understand more of what I'm talking about. But it's just, I kind of feel bad for the guy because it's got to be really stressful to make this game and then just it all blow up, you know? So... I don't know, the game looks really interesting, I'm actually going to be playing it, and I might stream it for you guys, so if you guys are interested in watching me stream that game, let me know in the comments, and I will see you guys in the next episode. I, I'm i really tired, I don't know, I might redo this whole episode, maybe not, and if I don't, well this is the ending, and I don't know, maybe I'll, maybe I'll spruce it up a little bit, I don't know, I don't know what I'm saying anymore, I'm tired, and this episode is weird. I'll see you guys in the next one. Stop watching. Why are you still watching this? Why am I still talking? I don't know. It... Alright, let's start off with some good old fashioned... This chair squeaks too much. If I had one thing I would do, it wouldn't be the WD-40 this chair. I have WD-40. I should do that. Maybe after this episode. I can't do it right now. I'm recording. Two of my favorites, Charizard and Mewtwo, as playable characters. So that's pretty cool. I'm glad he's back. I'm going to play him. And I'll psychic all of you. I don't know. It's pretty cool that you can actually play locally eight players. Now I just got to get um, eight friends to play on the same screen as me. Parties. I don't know. Back onto the Pokemon thing that I was talking about a minute ago. So back to Pokemon. We uh, wow! I am so out of it right now. Where's my head at? Where's my head at? Where's my head at? And it locks again. I don't know. You guys, you guys figure it out. I don't have Dark Souls too. Do it. Go. I just I told you about it. Play it. See what it does. I'm not feeling this right now. I'm like, Ugh. gotta get myself hyper. I'm 
might redo this L episode later.